Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two of Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. We're live here in the Mighty 1090 Studios with the band, the tackle guru himself, Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, getting really excited about this Fred Hall show coming up. There's so much going on. I- I'm with you, Doug. I think this year is going to be crazy from... The unbelievable season that we just that we just had, sure. To the honestly unbelievable fishing that's going on right now. I mean, great yellowtail and bluefin, and, and it's like the spring is already here, and it's 70 degrees when you go outside in the air temp, and the water is in the mid 60s, and it's blue and beautiful, and it. I just think that with everything that we had and everything that we're currently having, all the great fishing that we're about to hear about from this catch report coming up, it's just. It's going to be an awesome time. It, it just really is. I mean, the the fish are used to coming here. There's plenty of bait. Um, you never know. Mother Nature's Mother Nature, and something could blow up. But I really don't think so. I think we're in a really favorable pattern. Normally, you don't see a good year followed by a horrible year. It's, it's usually cyclical, and and you know, kind of the bumps get smoothed out over time. And we went through a horrible time there for four or yeah, five years yeah. with. You know, throw a bad economy on top of bad fishing, and and uh, everybody took up golf and skiing, but. Um, you know, if, if ever you wanted to fish, you're in a pattern now where <laughs> it's, it's, it's time. I mean, yeah. saltwater fishing is where it's at right now. No doubt about it. Well, it's really good and a lot of fun. And speaking of really good, we're going to find out right now what's going on because it is time for the catch report. And our catch report today is sponsored in part by the Sato Crimp and Winder Company, where they only make products that work. If you want to end connection failures, you need to get the Sato Crimp Kit. It's a must-have piece of gear for your next trip to help you catch everything from school size tuna to record size tuna with all brass crimps and other features is better than ever it's the favorite connection method on the royal star the royal polaris the american angler and i'll throw it in here too we use it all the time at fisherman's landing tackle shop it's a very clean and secure connection and just like doug was talking with the rods we don't put anything out the door that we don't have a hundred percent confidence in and the sato crimp system is definitely one of those things that we are a hundred percent on it's the great connection for all those boats plus most of the other top boats if you haven't already you should make it your preferred connection system for spectra to mono or to fluorocarbon you can get it selected tackle stores like the long fin fisherman's lining tackle or at sato crimp and winder.com and we're going to start off our catch report with the man our private boater buddy captain mark wish of pacific edge has got our fish dope.com report good morning mark good morning ricky good morning doug good morning how are you yeah. uh, we're doing good buddy i love listening to you two guys man you're enthusiastic <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun yeah, you do, and that's great, and there's certainly a lot to be pumped up about right now, let me tell you. So this past week, for the first time in many weeks, our offshore bite out there in the Tanner and the Cortez has slowed a little bit. You know, the fish are still around. They just took a little bit of time off, I think, and hopefully they get back on the bite. But remember, guys, those guys are stealthy out there. It's light line and small hooks, and it's been an absolutely extraordinary circumstance to have that bluefin bite all winter, and hopefully they continue to do so there. Uh, closer in, we've had a couple good checks from San Clemente Island, as expected. That sector is loaded with yellowtails, school size fish up to the west, better grade backside middle, backside east, and uh, good bass fishing throughout. That island is, uh, I think we get a little bit warmer water on it, a little bit more into the springtime. Oh, my God, we're going to see some sensational yellowtail fish in there. Catalina, I had a fun trip here this last uh, Sunday. We actually started local. Caught a couple of those big yellows out there on the horseshoe on, on the yo-yo iron there just to tune up and then blasted over to give it a little check. We uh, got a couple more school size yellowtails, several bonitas, some nice calico bass, and uh, was having a blast fishing that flat fall jig, man. They were liking that thing. And uh, we did look around a little bit at some sea bass spots and metered a little here and there, front side west mostly. I did mark two small schools that looked to be bigger grade fish, but no bites, but hopefully soon coming. It's getting to be that time. And then uh, on the beach here for those big yellows, man, that fishing's just been a blast. The private boat guys, uh, especially here this week, have just had some really big days as well as some not-so-big days. You, you know, like everything, they bite for a while, they quit for a while. But uh, it's a huge area from below the border up to above Point Doom. But right here in the Long Beach area, my backyard, there's 
two main areas, the 150, and then out there, southeast bank, a little bit deeper. The guys are fishing 25 to 45 fathoms out there. And then uh, up on a horseshoe proper where it's more 14 to 18 fathoms, there's fish in both areas. And uh, mostly jig fish. You know, I've seen a few caught on bait. You know, I've not caught one on bait. We can catch them all on the iron. Uh, fishing that yo-yo iron and a little bit on the surface plug. And, man, it's been good fishing. So remember, guys, you know, with uh, March 1st now, we're going to be able to fish some cods and ling cods and sheep heads and all that other stuff to round out the bag. Yeah. That's going to be a blast. And, of course, Fred Hall show and then uh, – you know, maybe MC Bass will start buying, too. So, holy cow, it's looking good. Time to go fishing, guys. I love it, Mark. Great report, as always. And we always say, you know, that's the kind of info that you can get if you're a member of FishDope.com. I know I check it all the time, see what's going on. I love the fact that in one stop, you can check water temps, great fishing reports, weather reports, and, and the great info. And, Mark, I know that you uh, you upload info to Danny just like that all the time. And if somebody wants to save $20 on a new membership, you can just type in the code Hook up 1090. Hook up 1090, all spelt out, all in lowercase with no space. Hook up 1090. Going to save you 20 bucks on a new membership to fishdope.com. Mark, if somebody wants to get more info, uh, all the stuff going on with you, how do we do that? Ricky, we're in Huntington Beach. We're on the corner of Bolsa Cheek and Edinger. And uh, phone number at the store is area code 714 840 4262. The website's PacificEdgeTackle.com. And of course, we'll be at the show and I'm doing some seminars there also. Got a new PowerPoint presentation we're putting together Sweet. to highlight some of what's been happening last year and this winter so far. So we got some fun stuff for you guys. Can't wait, Mark. Really looking forward to seeing you at the show and uh, appreciate the great report as always. We'll talk to you next week. You got it, guys. Thanks, Let's Mark. It. Let's head on down now over to C4 Sport Fishing and talk to the man who has had a very busy winter. And that's Marcos down to C4 Sport Fishing. Marcos, how's our farm system doing there? Uh, that was pretty funny. I, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like that one. Yeah, you're finally outnumbered two to one right now, so I can, I can keep it rolling. How did you guys do in the Bay Bass tournament this year? We did great. We we were, we were very happy. We, we did awesome. Honestly, the the fishing was the toughest it's ever been, and we felt like we didn't fish that well. But when all was said and done. On an equal playing field, we did we did fine. Yeah, we were we were pretty happy with it this year. A little different rules with the uh, not quite as many bass this year. It was definitely a, a thing that I would say the three fish limit helped some and hindered others, and I think that we fell uh, we fell to the to the hindered to the hindered side of it. But uh, you know what? It was a lot of fun, and I think the three fish rule overall for the tournament probably is a good thing. I think in all, it's a it's a good thing. There's a lot more limits that are going to get weighed, and I think it really makes it a good level playing field. It so does. I like it. Yeah, that 14-inch uh, limit made it so a lot of guys couldn't bring a limit in. They didn't feel yeah. good about the tournament. Well, now a lot of guys brought three fish in. They were in the game. They felt good about it. So it's it's a great tournament, and uh, we want to keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Spe- Absolutely. I was going to say, speaking of keeping it going, I don't know how fishing can continue to be so great, but I know that things at Seaforth have just been awesome, and I know that you guys have been running steady, and I'm sure there was some great fishing going on this week. Yeah, too bad it wasn't the San Diego La Jolla Yellowtail Tournament this year. <laughs> in competition. Yeah, that's for sure. It did slow down a bit over the last few days here. It was bound to happen. Uh, conditions changed a bit. You can see, you know, look outside, the weather shifted a bit. And hopefully that comes back. You know, they only saw a handful of Yellowtail this week on the half days there. A little bit of bass, a couple of halibut in there, but not what it was a couple of weeks ago. But it's bound to happen. I mean, that Yellowtail almost carried us into the rockfish opener next Sunday. And if they catch a few more this week, I mean, can't complain about it. It's probably the best January, February I've seen oh, since I started working here. No question. And just to hear that you say it slowed down, that they only had a <laughs> handful of yellows in February yeah. is pretty darn awesome. Yeah, and like I said, hopefully that kicks back up a bit here and carries into next month. But if not, you know, like I said, they're still going to be going out, looking around, seeing those fish there. Sorry, next Sunday we'll be able to catch some of those rockfish again locally, so definitely keep an eye on that. The San Diego went down to the island today. Hopefully they'll get into some yellow tails. First right. they've run in about a month or so there after doing some boat work. And the boat looks nice and new there. So definitely check that out. Check the website. We have half-day and three-quarter day trips up there. And they're both going to be online daily as long as you guys want to come out fishing. We'll be running those trips. We still have some day and a half scheduled. We have five boats out again tonight. I mean, that's that's just insane for February. Five day and a half boats for like the third weekend this month. It's just absolutely nuts. And, again, fishing slowed down a bit offshore there. Um, only six bluefin and 30 bonita for the tribute that came back yesterday. Earlier in the week, they had a uh, seven bluefin, 51 yellowtail, 50 bonita. Aztec had some bluefin bonita also earlier in the week there. So not quite what we were seeing a couple weeks ago, but still some very good fishing, especially taking into account, like I said, it's February right now. 
And, I mean, I'm guessing a lot of people didn't have time to put their gear away this year, so I think they should just take it straight to the C4 Tackle Shop to get it tuned up there and, and get ready for a great summer coming up here. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I know we were waiting, like, well, how we're gonna, how am I gonna, how am I gonna fish this ball? Couldn't agree with you more, Marcos. There's some awesome fishing, and and certainly, uh, certainly, just a good time to go. You know, there's great fishing still to be had, and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised, especially once we get through this little bit of a uh, kind of overcasty weather here coming up. I, I'll, I'll bet we're gonna get right back into good fishing, seeing that yellowtail. I'm very anxious to hear what Booger and the boys do on the three quarter day today. I, I think there's still a lot of great fishing locally as well as those day and a half trips to be had over at Seaforth. Yeah, I'm definitely an excited. Check the website there. Half day, three quarter day, still some day and a half in there. Um, if you're if you're waiting out for the rockfish, you can either go on the three quarter day. I know some of those boats in there have some great fishing. Delgato ran a six pack charter down there in the middle of the week and had very good rock fishing. Or half day will be running next week. You're gonna have a shot of yellowtail on most of these trips again here and. That I'm sure this is going to carry straight over in the spring, and then it'll be summer before we know it. I love it. Marcos, if somebody wants to book any of those trips, how do we do it? Check the website, seaforthlanding.com. You can make reservations right online there. You can call us at the office, 619-224-3383. Get you guys set up and get you out there fishing. Appreciate it, Marcos. Thanks a lot for a great report. Look forward to seeing you next weekend. We'll talk to you then. All right, Marcos, thanks a lot for that. And speaking of C4 sport fishing, it's where you go if you want to jump on board the Eclipse. And we got the man from the Eclipse, Captain Mark Gillette, is online. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? We're doing great. Just uh, hoping to continue our catch for a little bonus. Stoked to get to hear from you this morning. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, Steve and I are out here at the uh, Phoenix show here, at the ISE show, uh, kind of getting a little preview for our Fred Hall show here coming up in just a couple weeks. Um but uh, just kind of doing the show bugs here, and um, I just wanted to call in and let everybody know about some of the, the stuff that we're doing. Uh, obviously, the Eclipse is still running its trips out of C4. We're going to continue to do so. We've got our spring schedule up all the way through uh, the beginning of June now. So if guys want to get on that, they can just check our website out. But uh, the big news is for us uh, this week was that we we made a relationship with Long Beach Sport Fishing Burst 55. We'll be bringing the commander up there next week, um, and we're going to start running trips next Friday night. All right, excellent. So now, what uh, what kind of trips will we be look forward to seeing uh, on the commander? We'll be doing uh, um, open party trips, uh, limited load uh, for the El Dorado. So uh, uh, for the folks that want to do a, a little higher ticket price and fish with less folks on the boat, uh, we're going to offer that. As well as the month of March, uh, the El Dorado is going to be fishing San Nick, and we're going to be fishing San Clemente Island. So our first trip's Friday night before the opener. Um, we're going to be fishing Wednesday on our way out. We have heard, just like uh, Mark Wish reported, you know, good reports of yellowtail. So the crew's going to go out there and see if we can't put a little catch together and uh, hopefully get the boat out Friday night and go get some of that San Clemente Island yellowtail. That's exciting news, Mark. Glad to hear that. If somebody wants to book a ticket and go fishing on the Commander, starting to run this week now officially, how do we do that? Now you just go to longbeachsportfishing.com. They book right through their website there. And if anybody's interested in a charter, um, they can just call me at, at uh, 619-518-8701 for either Commander or Eclipse. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody up in, in Long Beach here for the Hall Show. Right on, Mark. Appreciate that. Look forward to it. Hope you guys have a great time there, and we'll see you at Long Beach. Appreciate the phone call right. very much. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Well, that's going to wrap up our Catch Report today. Catch Report sponsored in part by Job Site Supply, specializing in mechanical, electrical, and plumbing trades with lines like Milwaukee Electric Tools, and, Doug, I know you can touch on this. We personally know these guys and have fished with them, and they are hardcore fishermen. They are unbelievably good fishermen. Uh, <laughs> they own three boats, not just one. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bunch of their Milwaukee stuff that we use in the tackle store for uh, for our tools, um, you know, our uh, real repair tools and, and our drills and that kind of thing. And our... Uh, Fred Hall booth will be put up by <laughs> one of Job Site Supplies Milwaukee <laughs> <laughs> drills. There's no doubt about that, and I, I can speak on just you know the, the the guys are awesome. Like the whole crew there, they're yes. really good guys and just core, dependable, very honest, very good guys to do. Yeah, there's a reason with. they're successful. I mean, they they are great guys to deal with on both sides of the counter, and and anybody would be lucky to have them supplying them with their goodies. Yeah, so. and they're fishermen. And yes. you know, and they take care of guys like us and we know how well they operate and they they are. They're just the best yes. when it comes to that and they're very serious when it comes to doing dependable job site delivery and the best in Milwaukee tools. If you want more information, you can check out jobsupplyco.com for more details. And hey, when we come back, we got a big block of nothing but your phone calls. You stay tuned. Lots of great information coming your way. It's Let's Talk Hook Up right here on the Mighty 1090. Land Arrow. 
Here's John Ireland. You know, it's interesting because the ranch has a, probably a higher percentage than most of the hotels of guests that don't fish. And it's nice on the beach. You've got the beautiful reef right in front of the hotel that you can dive on. And, and that swimming pool is uh, right there hanging over the water. And it's a very popular spot as well. And the kids tend to bunch up and, and the wives tend to get to be friends. And what's happened over the years is a lot of families met down at the ranch and got to be friends and planned their vacations so they come down at the same time. We're kind of unique for the fact that I think we're really the last of the uh, old Baja fishing style hotels. So we're proud of that and we're going to hang on to that image. We're going to be around for the next couple decades at least. At Ranch Land Air, we don't want to be bigger. We want to be better. We keep it simple, old Baja style. Ranch Land Air, we get a lot of guests that come back two or three times a year. RanchLandAero.com. It's time for our Power Pro 60 Second Seminar on your next fishing trip. Be sure to get that Power Pro advantage. And you want to talk a lot of Power Pro. There has been some unreal amounts of Power Pro coming through the doors of the tackle. There's been some Power Pro advantage this last week. We got our huge (laughs) shipment in. And it's funny, but when I'm packing stuff, I sometimes, you know, think about, I wonder who's going to catch what fish on this. And uh, we had the Super Slick come in. We had the Hollow Ace come in. We had the traditional Solid come in. And, I mean, pound test from... 10-pound test up to 200 and, uh, you know, packing up for the Fred Hall Show, and that stuff's going to be uh, in full bloom at the Fisherman's <laughs> Landing booth there. I can't wait to see that. You know, we always say that Hollow Ace is such a superior line, and I'll tell you, we have the options of using every type of Spectra out there in the store. They make them all, and when I'm building a wind-on, I personally use Hollow Ace. It's what I use because it works easier, and it's just easier on on the guy making the rigging. It is, and uh, I got word from Shimano that they're, uh, or from PowerPro, that they're going to be doing a 500-yard school of Hollow Ace gets a free spool of Seaguar uh, fluorocarbon at the show. Ooh, how about that for a deal? As you can hear, it's Hollow Ace. Check it out at your favorite tackle store, or better yet, take advantage of deals like that at the upcoming Fred Hall Show. It's Fred Hall Show time. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Be sure to stop by the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth, the best selection of saltwater tackle at the show, including Shimano, rods, reels, and accessories. No one has a better selection of Shimano product than Fisherman's Landing Tackle, a must-visit at this year's Fred Hall Show. Sport fishing, not just for Dad anymore. At Dana Wharf Sport Fishing, kids fish free every Sunday. Free half-day fishing trip and clinic free for kids 12 and under every Sunday at Dana Wharf. Join the Dana Wharf Kids Club and get over $100 of really cool stuff like two free fishing trips, a free whale watch trip, and more. Dana Wharf, everyone's favorite since 1971. Click DanaWharf.com or visit them in the Dana Point Harbor, the bass capital of the West, and only minutes from the 5 Freeway in Orange County. DanaWharf.com, where kids fish free. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Phone lines are absolutely packed solid. I know everybody's excited to talk Fred Hall and Fred Hall deals. And all right, It's been crazy on the phones and everything, but I know that there's some more craziness <laughs> going on. Anything else that you can maybe slightly let out of the bag we might be expecting to see cool? You just kind of touched on a little Seaguar uh, yeah, Power Pro thing know, going on. Like, What else might we be? There's so many possible things I could talk about, but this one's actually a great crazy deal. And it's something that everybody uses and everybody needs. But, you know, Seaguar came out with their Threadlock uh, braided line. Yeah, great, great And line. so, you know, we like it in the shop, and uh, it's been doing real well on the long-range boats. Well, they have a deal where if you buy a uh, Threadlock spool 600 yards, you're going to get a 50-yard spool of Seaguar P- Premier. Well, that sounds pretty Premier cool. Seaguar Flor- Premier yeah, fluorocarbon, oh, you know, 50 bu- yards. Buy some braided line, get some free fluorocarbon. Well, look at this. 130-pound test is normally 149.95. We're going to have it for 109 at the store. So you buy a $109 spool of 600 yards of 130 thread lock. Which you're already using killer deals. You're saving 40 bucks. They're giving you a 50 yard, not just a little spool, 50 yards of anywhere from 100 to 200 pound Premier, which is like a $150 spool of line. 
So the freebie is like more than the spool of line you bought. <laughs> you're getting more in free goods than the actual spool yes. that you're paying the money for. And uh, they're doing the same thing, 50 through 80. You get a free 50 through 80 uh, wow. fluorocarbon, and it, but it's 50 yards. So and it's, it's and it's on premium stuff. It is. You know, it's, it's not it's uh, the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So premium <laughs> stuff, you're saving 40 bucks on the spool as is. Yes. Then you're getting potentially another spool of line that's over $100 on, on itself. So Right. You know, and then, I mean, the, the regular deal we have have had in past years, buy two, get one free of the, the Seaguar Premier, the pink. Um, well, the pink's going to be two for one. The too. pink's going to be two for one as well. But we discount that stuff, you know, as much as 30%, 40%. And then you get the buy two, get one free. You're, you're roughly getting the half off so on, cool. on Seaguar. So, I mean, that's a... That's a, one of the good ones, you and, know? And that's fluorocarbon that we all know we're all going to be using all year long. Exactly. You know, that's what's so cool about Fred Hall. So I love stocking up on, on hooks. I love the hook deals you always see. Gamakatsu hooks uh, on sale. Yes. All the different types of hooks on sale. Well, they're doing, uh, they're on doing sale. buy two, get one free. That's 33% off. I mean, and then, then we're cutting the price. So, yeah. I mean, uh, some, of the, some of the deals this year... I. It always amazes me when I'm punching the stuff in the computer, and it's like, can that be right? right. <laughs> well, that's a, that is a particular one, that the free goods can be more value than yes. the actual product that and you're buying. And it's stuff that you need. If you buy 130-pound uh, braided line, you need some heavy fluorocarbon. Pure, exactly. I mean, it's not like, oh, I'm getting something I don't need. You're going to buy it anyway. And a deal like that. And that's the other thing, too, that people that probably don't know. I mean, a 50-yard spool yes. is a massive amount of heavy fluorocarbon. We're talking you're going to be able to buy the braided line that you already need and then get through your entire trip exactly. with free goods. Yes. Awesome. Very, very cool. Yep. Well, hey, let's jump into the phones because I know they're packed up. And why don't this time we talk to Mario, who's calling us from Rancho Cucamonga. Good morning, Mario. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, great show, by the way. Thanks, Mario. How's it going? I'm good, man. Uh, you know what? I just bought a, a, a bunch of those flat fall jigs, and I have no idea on how to fish them. So I went online, <laughs> and I got all kinds of conflicting you know, viewpoints on how to fish them. What do you guys suggest? Well, that's because in any given situation, multiple methods will absolutely work. So you could be as traditional as traditional. You could drop it down and reel it up, drop it down and reel it up. But um, they, like we kind of touched on a little bit earlier, it gets bit very well on the sink. So if you're on a, a long drift, let's say, and there's some tuna under the boat, normally any kind of jig like that, you want to cast downwind so your boat will be drifting towards the jig. And uh, so that way the jig won't go under your feet and under the boat. So cast it downwind and, you know, just put your thumb on the spool and let it sink out. But be paying very close attention because those things will hit it on the on the fall. And so if it either stops or if it speeds up, you got to bite, put it in gear and turn the handle. You don't really want to, you know, swing for the seat. You just want to wind through the bite like they say, turn the handle fast and until you can't turn the handle anymore then the uh, line's going to come peeling off the, the reel. But try different depths. Listen to your captain. Oh, I got marks at 100 feet. You've got to start um, learning to sense how far down 100 feet is, and you want to get down through that to, you know, 125 feet. Then you can bring it back up to 75 feet and work that zone hard, but be paying attention on every retrieve and every minute that that jig is sinking for anything to change. And when it does, turn the handle as fast as you can until you've got the hook set. There you go. You ready to go thank make you, it happen, Mario? You. Yeah, I'm going to check them out. I'm going to try it, and uh, I'll give it a shot. Thanks, guys. Hey, appreciate the phone call very much. Next up, let's talk to Raul. Call us from Gardena this morning. Good morning, Raul. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Just a quick question. Are you going to have uh, blanks for sale at Fred Hall? And uh, I guess I'm looking for a, try to build that popper rod, spinning rod. Are you going to have anything like that available? Um. The short answer is absolutely yes, and just a little history. I did my first Fred Hall show in 1982, and we had a bin of Sabre Blanks. Um, and we have sort of, that's a big part of our business, has always been custom rod building. We have an entire rod building section. We will have hundreds of blanks from the highest of high quality uh, on down through some very good blanks at amazing closeout uh, type deals. Um, so, I mean, obviously we're going to have the Cal Stars and the Seekers, and then we've got some nice inshore blanks that would normally be in that, you know, $79 to $109 range, and they're going to be ridiculously low. They'll probably sell out the first or second day, I hate to say. Um, we've got uh, about 300 of those. But, uh, yes, we will have a great supply of blanks, um, the knowledge to kind of help uh, select the components for you, 
and all the components, the cork tape, reel seats, hypalon, guides, tips, finishes, uh, the marbling paste. I mean, everything that you could imagine we've got in the booth, and we can kind of hook you up on, on the right way to do it. All right. Look forward to pulling out a few uh, rods there. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Well, Thanks, Rel. Can't wait to see you at the show. Appreciate that very much. Speaking of the show, the man of the hour himself is on the line, Bart Hall. Good morning, Bart. Well, good morning. Good morning, Doug. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I was watching you on TV the other night. Oh, really? What was I doing? Catching bass? You were you were watching people catch bass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Yeah. Rick, Rick was right next to me. Rick, did I catch a big one? Not only I no, think, you did. Yeah, I was going to say Bart. Bart not only caught. I think it, it was a it was a slugfish between him and Mike. It was. Who had the biggest bass on the whole trip. There were some nice yeah, bass on that. That was <laughs> fun. <laughs> Fun, oh, fun man. day. That oh, was man. a great day. Wasn't yes. that fun, Bart? It was really fun when that uh, when those uh, guys were about to jump in the water with that hammerhead there. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It was just a it was a cool, cool day. Very cool. Hey, well, I just want to tell you, you know, we're we're very stressed and and you know overwhelmed just like you are, but you make it sound really fun. I'm really excited about the Fred Hall show. <laughs> to to you. We can't wait. I'm telling you, as much work as it is, and trust me, it is uh, full focus mode for weeks to get uh, to get our end done, and it's months on your end. But this is a tradition that is in the soul of every fisherman, and the longer that you're in the industry and the longer that you fish in Southern California, the more Fred Hall shows you go to. This is an Im- important piece of our culture, of our sport, of our hobby, of our passion, and... Uh, I just can't wait for this to go down. It's, I mean, we're in the two-minute warning right now, and and I couldn't be more excited. Me too. I think we've got a real opportunity to connect with some lapsed anglers and some new anglers. And it's, I think we, over the next couple of years, we're going to have a chance to really build our sport up, and it's going to be great for everybody. Yep, I couldn't agree, agree with you more. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> the other day, Mike goes, Mike goes, 400 seminars. This is crazy. You can't do 400 seminars. He said, Mike, but, but that, that's what sets us apart. He says, I know, but it's still crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that we do on your end and on our end is crazy, but in a good way. I mean, it's just, yeah. it, somehow every year it, it goes off and it's just a great experience. I mean, it's, it's just, it just somehow comes together. Think about how cool it is that every, I mean, virtually every person that has called the show today that gave those great catch reports. We heard from Brandon Hayward. We heard from Mark Wish. We, all those guys and every one of them said the same thing. You know, I can't wait to see you guys. Oh, I can't wait either. We're going to be at Fred Hall show. I'll be doing a seminar. I'll be doing a seminar. I'll be doing a seminar. Yes. You got everybody that has held a fishing rod darn near to do a seminar, Bart, and I can't <laughs> wait. And that's one of my favorite parts about Fred Hall show. Yeah, uh, me, me too. Actually, that uh, that and dreaming about all the places to go fishing. And, yes, uh, I'm I'm actually going to buy some new tackle this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of cool new stuff to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I don't want to take up much any more of your time, but I really it's a great show. I've enjoyed listening to you. It's a lot of fun. Who needs Pete? You know, I mean, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we need Pete. That's <laughs> yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Bart. Well, we can't wait. Fred Hall show is here. Give us the details. If somebody uh, if somebody doesn't know times or dates, give us the rundown on uh, on when we get to go take advantage of all these great deals and new tackle and seminars and everything else. Well, you get to move in on Monday, but for the rest of the people, it's it's uh, it's March fourth through the eighth. That's Wednesday through Sunday, and Wednesday through Friday, we're open from one until nine. Saturday from ten until eight thirty, and Sunday from ten until seven. Awesome! Cannot wait. We're uh, we're you should see the shop. It's a buzz of uh, packing and pricing and taping and boxes and blanks and rods and gear <laughs> and it's craziness down there. And it's all for the big show. And Bart, we we can't wait. Okay, guys. Awesome, Bart. Thanks a lot for calling. Thanks, Bart. Appreciate that very much. Hey, I wanted to remind everybody, too, speaking of Fred Hall Show traditions, this is the week that the postman just, I'm sure, dreads, because it's when Western Outdoor News comes oh out with God. the novel, the giant <laughs> phone book-looking issue of Western Outdoor News is coming this week. It's the big Fred Hall Show issue, and can't wait to thumb through that because it's just an amazing collection of everything that's going on, all the deals, and, you know, they always uh, highlight all the things to expect at the show, little previews. They have so Special supplements that are just dedicated to the Fred Hall Show. I'm very excited to see that here in the the latest issue of Western Outdoor News. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, phones are packed. We're going to jump right back into them. This time talking to Jerry, calling us from Buena Park. Jerry, good morning. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Yeah, uh, Rick, you, uh, this question is for you, either you or Dougie, the one. I'm looking at buying another uh, freshwater uh, reel, and I've got Corrado's, 
and um, I've looked at the Cronarch, and I've heard some rumors that uh, Shimano is coming out with a new Cronarch. Is that correct? Well, um, as far as for fresh water between Corrado and Cronarch, I'm assuming that you probably are going to want the little smaller one, the 200 size. Yes. And uh, that Cronarch certainly is um, an, an awesome reel. And I think that the um, the Cronarch that you might be talking about is um, the uh, CI4, which is um, it's kind of the one that's the, the gray color, and it has kind of a little reddish spool to it. Yeah. Um, and that's their their higher quality. And if if money was no object, that would definitely be be the one that you want to go with. It's much lighter in weight. Um, it it just fits in your hand. It's kind of got that sports car look about it. Um, well, I, I have the Corrado. I've got one of the new Corrados, and I was thinking about going to that with the higher uh, ratio, the 7.2, and I just would, wasn't sure which way to go there uh, uh, for bay bass fishing. Yeah, for any saltwater application, I'm always a proponent of the higher gear ratio, but some of the techniques in freshwater, that more middle-of-the-road uh, gear ratio works better. Crank fading okay. and such. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's Rick definitely does more freshwater than I do, and so, you know, he might want to elaborate on that, but. I, I think you're dead on. I, I think uh, I think between the two reels, you're you're talking about two great options, um, especially if you were talking about the you know the CI4 style Cronark between the two. I think Cronark is just going to be you're you're paying for not a ton of difference in functionality because they're both going to function very similar. You're just getting a little bit less weight, a little more advanced braking system, a little bit smoother operation. Um, so th- those are the things, and that's just up to the individual on what the budget is going to allow for. That That's the thing that I like. You know, obviously we, we get the opportunity to do it at Fisherman's Landing Tackle, but also at at a good store or at the Fred Hall show where you can lay all those reels out on the counter and get to handle each one. Because let's face it, a Corrado is a fantastic reel at a lesser price point. And be it just nuts and bolts, they're both going to do exactly what you want to do just fine. It's up to the individual to decide if these extra features are worth my hard-earned dollar. And sometimes they no question are, and sometimes it's, well, you know what, this is a better reel at the price, and I can put this money also towards a rod. So function-wise, they're both going to be perfect. It's just up to you to decide how much you like the the smoothness, the weight, the the braking system, things like that. Well, in the past, the Corrado has always been more expensive than the Cronarch, and uh, that's what kind of confused me there a little bit because I've always paid more than about $250 for the Corrados, and uh, the, the Cronarch was less. So I wasn't sure about the uh, features. Yeah, Cronarchs. yeah, the Cronarchs have always been, been a higher. little more expensive. The yeah. the Corrado, when they had the uh, the E series, um, they were two seventy nine, and now the current one I believe is two fifty nine. The standard Cronarch uh, is the white one is um, one ninety nine ninety five, and and um, about another hundred bucks for the the CI four. So the the Cronarch is definitely the the little bit higher quality, higher price reel. Great reels, whatever you decide, Jerry. And like I said, I think that we're just going to come down to putting them both in your hand. Beauty going to the Fred Hall show is you're going to not only get to see them, but you're going to get to feel them and talk to the pros that, that use them every day. And I, uh, I wish you the best of luck, whichever decision you, you happen to choose. Yeah, I can't wait to get to the show. You guys will have the, both of those there at the show. I'm bringing my grandson with me. I, I try to bring him every year with me there. We have every low-profile reel from uh, 69 bucks up to, you know, 400 plus dollars. So we've got all of them. You can lay them out on the counter. We can show you the features. You can make a good, educated decision. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate the phone call very much. All right. How about next up, we jump right back into the phones, and this time talk to Jillian, call us from Pacific Beach. Hi, Jillian. Uh, good morning, Rick. Good morning, um, uh Bill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're messing with you, Julie. <laughs> I think about what I'm going to ask you. I get on the phone and, you know, feel like a total idiot. idiot. Anyway, oh, get out of here. hopefully my question is not so stupid. Um, I recently went down to a pole net and I took some heavy jigs, uh, PL-68. Um, I lost one, and believe it or not, on the other one, the ring broke. So, uh, so the hook came off. Luckily, it was still in the fish, so that was all right. However, those were the only two heavy jigs I had, um, ten and a half ounces. What would you suggest as a replacement for that? Well, here's the thing. Um, most years, we don't have to use quite the, the bigger jigs that we're using now because right now we're fishing in two to 350 feet of water. 
And uh, so the heavier jigs just get down quicker, give you a little bit more fishing time. On the flip side of that, um, they're much more difficult to grind, and you're going to wear your arm out much more quickly. So I always just say it was a very rough sea when I was down there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And nothing would go down except the very heavy grind. Yes. And so when when you're relegated to using those heavier jigs, a 7X Salus Heavy has been a good choice. Also, the full size 6X, uh, the Taddy 4O has been a good go to jig. And the PL68, if if you can stand to crank that thing, I mean, that's going to get down the quickest of all. But um, you're going to wear out very quickly using that jig. So a um, couple things. I always recommend using the smallest jig you can get away with um, for ease of use. But when you have to use a heavier jig, um, if you can position yourself so you can cast so that the boat is drifting towards the jig, um, you'll get more time on the bottom before uh, you have to bring it up and, and go again. If you just drop it straight down and drift away from that jig, if it's a strong wind, strong current, um, yeah, you're going to get, yeah. you know, you're going to have a tougher time getting to the bottom and have less time cranking that jig. So, uh, you know, ask the crew members in any condition, hey, what's my best uh, t- attack for this right, right now? Should I cast it? Should I drop it straight down? And, um, you know, you've got to be mindful of the other fishermen. So if you do cast, you've got to be careful. Watch the yeah. jig and watch not to cast over somebody's line. But um, you want your jig in the fish zone as long as possible. So figure out the best method when you're yo-yoing, both size a jig and where to position the jig so you get the most time in the bite zone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. Appreciate the phone call. Look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, Up at Fred Hall. We will definitely see you there. We're looking forward to it. (laughs) Thanks, Jillian. Appreciate the phone call. Ron in San Diego, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Ron. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, I got a question for Doug. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. Now, when you're yo-yoing for yellowtail, what's the best to use, uh, all braid or mono? Um, certainly braid would sink down more easily, but with that said, if you use pretty much straight braid, you have a lot of casualties ripping hooks out of the fish. Um, it's just, it seems like that little bit of stretch that you get with the monofilament um, will give you an advantage. Now, you could use a hybrid of the two and put, um, you know, say a 25 or 30 yard piece of monofilament so that when you drop down, maybe some of the line in the water becomes braid, which does not catch the water um, in the wind or the current conditions quite as much. Um, but you definitely want that rubber band, that stretch of that monofilament. Um, you're just going to catch more fish and not lose as many fish. And, and even guys snap their jigs off. You know, it's such a violent bite. And uh, with no stretch, um, it's just not a good scenario. And don't be afraid to use heavy line. If if you can get away with 50-pound test, or I know guys even fishing 60-pound this year, the fish are not shy. As long as you can get your jig down there, um, I'm a, a huge fan of 50-pound test. Yeah, feed them the rope. Exactly. Just, you know, big hook, big hooks and heavy line put fish on the boat, period. I, I learned my lesson on that years ago fishing with Joel Ralston on the backside of uh, the Coronado Islands. And I uh, had my little Newell 332 with my 30-pound test, you know, and I yo-yoed up the first one on the boat. And I fought this fish for a while, and he finally rocked me. And in the meantime, those guys had their pen 4-0s, and they had 50-pound test. And uh, two of the crew members just roped a couple of nice big yellows, and I lost mine. I said, you know what? I'm never using light line Last again. Last time I'm making that mistake. Exactly. <laughs> Ron, you all ready to go? Now, do you do you put 50-pound uh, mono on the braid? I do, absolutely. And I, I use 100 yards. I just, I'm basically fishing straight mono when I yo-yo. But, you know, it, there's nothing that says you, as long as you've got, uh, you know, a 75-foot piece of line on there, um, you can put some specter in the water, but uh, have at least that. Have at least 25 yards so it gives you the stretch. I see. Appreciate the phone call very much, Ron. We're going to look forward to seeing you at the show? Uh, yeah. All right, Stop man. Be at the Del Mar show. Can't wait. All we'll right. see you then. We'll see you then. Thanks, Ron. How about next up we talk to Hills, Connors for Ventura this morning. Hi, Hills. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rick. Hey, Doug. How are you doing? Great, Hills. Good morning. What's going on? Morning. Hey, um, I'm... I'm excited about the Torium that's been re reworked um, by Shimano now, and I was wondering if you could sort of fill in a little more info. Like, um, are they going to offer it in a two-speed? And then uh, the other question would be, on the different sizes of Toriums, 
what would be kind of like what pound test you would be putting on those different sizes and what sort of um, fishing and fish species would you be able to deal with using those those new toriums? Okay, well, a torium is a star drag reel, which nobody's been able to invent a star drag two-speed that I'm aware of, so it's definitely going to be a single speed. The main advantages to a star drag reel is that they are slightly lighter weight and they're going <clears> to <throat> free spool much better so for casting a jig, especially like a lightweight jig, or a small bait like a sardine or an anchovy, a uh, star drag reel is always going to be the better choice for casting. And even not so much just the cast, but when your bait hits the water, being able to pull line off the spool without as much weight. Um, they have replaced the older torium in size 16, 20, and 30, and they're going to keep the 14 in the original gold style. So the 16... Um, you could put um, 40 to 60 pound Spectra uh, Power Pro on there, and then anywhere from a, a 20 to even a, a 40 pound piece on there. The gears, the drags, and the bearings are all the same for all three, so they just become wider, allowing you for more line capacity. The 20 is probably going to be that uh, 65 Power Pro with uh, 40 pound over the top is great for surface iron, yeah. throwing a bait out there, um, dropper looping. Uh, yo-yoing, uh, but again, you could put 25, 30, 40 on there. And then the 30, that um, holds a lot of line, so you may have the same pound test, you know, 25, 30, or 40, or even 50, but you're going to get more line. So, you know... Um, talking about yo-yoing with a longer top shot you were just talking about. Right. You can fit more of that um, bigger line on And there. the thing that I love about the 30 now is you can actually fish the yo-yo because it's a, a smaller reel physically in your hand. It's not that big, wide reel like it used to be. And uh, if you want to cast uh, a bait at a marlin, I mean, you've got plenty of line on there for something like that. So just becomes a matter of more line capacity on the three reels. And it's a, you know, like you said, just like the Trinidad did, if you're used to the size of the 20 and the 30 in the older Torium, it's oh, going to feel one size smaller. Absolutely. A 30 is going to feel almost smaller than a 20 used to feel. Pretty darn cool. Yep. Bills, you ready to go check it out? Yeah, man. I'm gonna get. I'll be looking at the Fred Hall. All right, brother. Appreciate the phone call very much. How about next up? We talk to Sam. Calling us from Irvine. What's up, Sam? Good morning. Uh, you know, I have another question about those flat falls. The uh, I've seen on YouTube where they're casting them back on the the slide. Is that uh, is that something that you do with the flat fall, or is that just them fishing them that way? Any chrome jig, or I'm even going to go out on a limb and just say any jig that you put back on the slide when you get a hookup on tuna is likely to get a bite. And a flat fall would be a perfect candidate for that. Um, you know, at first it's going to go back there and, and it's going to pull behind the boat just a little bit. But then as the boat slows down, that thing is going to start seeking the deeper and deeper water and it's going to have an action built into it. You don't have to impart any action on it and... Uh, it's, it'd be a great slide jig. What size? Um, the uh, 160 and the 130 size have tended to be the most useful for, uh, because we fish you know, a little heavier line, 30 and 40 and even 50, and um, just having a little weight to it and a little size to mimic the size of our local baits, the, the 160 and the 130 size. Great. You ready to go do it, Sam? I'm, I am ready. <laughs> Me too, man. I appreciate the phone call very much. You know, I want to throw something in there for uh, for Hills and a couple of guys who want to check out those new Toriums. Obviously, the first uh, time we're going to get to debut them is at the Fred Hall Show. But another thing, if you want a chance to get to use one, maybe before you make your purchase, our Shimano Let's Talk Cookup on the Water seminars are all up on the trips page. And the beauty of the Shimano Let's Talk Cookup on the Water seminars is they are trips that cost exactly the same amount that the trip would normally cost at a full open Open, tic open party ticket. There's no, you're not paying any extra for the trip, but you're getting a slightly limited load, and more importantly, you're going to get a seminar, and you're going to get to check out all of the cool new Shimano gear, oh, and those nice. new Toriums will definitely be a part of that. I would say the best thing to do right now would just be to go onto our trips page at hookup1090.com. Just look for the trips guest at trips page, and just tons of great trips. Uh, a really expanded things would be trips out of Dana War Sport Fishing on the Sum Fun and the Dana Pride. Tons of great trips uh, down in San Diego on the Islander and the Searcher and the San Diego out of C4 Sport Fishing. And we got trips on the Oceanside 95, trips on the Free.
freedom, just tons of great different opportunities from three-quarter days all the way up to day-and-a-half type trips, and I know a lot of them are extremely popular. So they are officially out now, and the best thing to do would be to check out our trips page, and that will get you dialed in on the dates that uh, that all those trips are coming and hopefully a chance to pull on a yellow on that brand-new tour. The old try before you buy. <laughs> it's not a bad <laughs> deal for sure. Hey, when we come back, we're going to find out what three lucky guys are not only going to the Fred Hall Show, but they got a brand-new fishing rod, one of those unbelievable deals that we talked about it earlier in the show. we got more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way in the mighty 1090. Here's important news from Searcher Sport Fishing. Our 2015 schedule is now available at searchersportfishing.com. This is Captain R. Taylor. After an outstanding 2014 season, I promise our trips will fill fast. The Searcher offers great service, awesome food, air-conditioned cabins, an RSW system to preserve your catch and plenty of room at the rail. Call Celia at 619-226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. Or book online today at Searcher sportfishing.com. It's Fred Hall Show time. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Be sure to stop by the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth. You'll find the best selection of saltwater tackle at the show, including a complete selection of accurate reels. No one has a better selection of accurate reels than Fisherman's Landing Tackle, a must visit at this year's Fred Hall Show. Hi, I'm Bart Hall, and I'm here to tell you about the Fred Hall Show, the ultimate outdoor experience, March 4th to the 8th at the Long Beach Convention Center. People often ask me, what is a Fred Hall Show? Well, it's the largest consumer fishing show in the world, California's largest boat show, the most fun international travel show in the West, and Southern California's finest hunting show. I love these shows, not just because my family name is on them, but because generations of Californians have grown up loving these events with me. Every year, the shows are different, but this year, we will be celebrating the greatest saltwater fishing fishing season in over 30 years. We believe that this will be our best Fred Hall show ever. The show is packed with thousands of high-quality fishing, fly fishing, travel, camping, and dive exhibits. There are over 400 interesting seminars and dozens of family fun events, including the world's greatest knife thrower. There will be more boats on display than ever before. My grandchildren keep asking me if it's time for Papa's show. Yes, it's time for Papa's show. The exceptional Fred Hall show, March 4th to the 8th at the Long Beach Convention Center. Details at fredhall.com. Hey, Seaguar fans, the wait is over for premium quality pink fluorocarbon leader material. Seaguar Pink Label is made from the same proprietary process and exclusive Seaguar resins you trust. Seaguar Pink Label is soft and supple, yet provides superior knot and tensile strength. In fact, it has 30% better knot strength than competitive floral lines. A portion of the proceeds from the sale of Pink Label will be donated to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, Inc. Get Seaguar Pink Label leader material at your favorite tackle dealer. To learn more, visit at Seaguard.com. XSRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. You're at the big winners of the brand new Liquid Stick Rod, which again, we talked about the Fred Hall Show, one of the unbelievable deals, a really good deal in the shop at 60 bucks, and people are going to get to buy it at the Fred Hall Show booth for twenty nine ninety five. I'm still blown away. Right. Crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Hey, the winners of that rod and their choice of ticket to a Fred Hall Show, Del Mar or Long Beach, going to Jillian in Pacific Beach, Russ in Laguna Woods, and Jerry in Garden Grove. Guys, congratulations. You're going to be stoked on that. Another really cool thing called in during the break, we uh, heard the eclipse already at 70 yellows this morning at Colonnette. It's not even it's 9 o'clock building. yet. It's happening right now. <laughs> Doug, cannot wait for the Fred Hall Show. It is so right around the corner and so much cool stuff that we didn't even have a chance to talk about. It's going to have to see at the booth. Yep, it's going to be a great year again. I uh, hope to see a lot of you in the shop maybe this week going fishing. Always the best way to get a hold of us is just come down to the shop and hang out and talk fishing mm-hmm. or 619-221-8506. And I want to throw a shout out to my good friend Betty. All right. <laughs> well, lots of great stuff going. Cannot wait for uh, for the Fred Hall Show. We've got so many good deals and so much fun, and we are going to have an absolute blast. And uh, can't wait to can't wait to be a part of Fred Hall Show with you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, when we come back tomorrow, another great show coming your way. Mark Lampson and Lori from the Turner's Outdoorsman. We're going to be talking more tackle, talking more Fred Hall Show, and more great reports. It's a great time. Can't wait to have you here. It's Let's Talk Hookup tomorrow morning from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on the Mighty 1090. Getting a bit excited.